February 15th, I'll be starting an indoor biochar trial in which I'll compare plants grown in a potting mix that includes biochar versus the same plants grown in a similar potting mix with no biochar. Other members of the Home Garden Field Trials community, including the Self-Sufficient Life, Southpaw Davy, and Nick Peters, will also be conducting trials. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who will be participating or following the trials. In this video, I'll talk about my interest in evidence-based gardening, what hypotheses I hope to test in the indoor trial, a little bit about the design of the trial, and why participating in the trial doesn't have to be as big of a hassle as I sometimes make it seem. I'll also give an update on my latest preparation for the trial, which was to charge and inoculate my biochar with worm castings. My overarching goal in conducting this and future trials is to move toward a more evidence-based approach to gardening. So though I'm excited about the possible benefits of biochar, I'm going to test it out on a small scale first to assess its effectiveness before using it more broadly in the garden. For the indoor trial, I'll be using a homemade biochar. If it performs well, I'll also use it in an outdoor field trial in the spring. If it performs poorly, however, I'll purchase biochar from a supplier for the outdoor trial. Because I'm a novice at making biochar, I don't want to rule out biochar as a soil amendment based solely on the performance of my homemade char, which could possibly be lower quality than commercially available products. The indoor trial will be testing two simple hypotheses. First, adding biochar to a potting mix at a rate of 10 to 20 percent of the mix will not have an impact on the germination rate of seeds. And second, Adding biochar to a potting mix at a rate of 10 to 20 percent of the mix will result in larger plant growth. To test these hypotheses, there will be three groups in my indoor trial, a control group and two test groups. Control group plants will be grown in a potting mix containing 50 percent coconut coir, 50 percent worm castings, and no biochar. Plants in test group A will be grown in a potting mix of 40% coconut coir, 50% worm castings, and 10% biochar. And finally, test group B plants will be grown in a potting mix containing 30% coconut coir, 50% worm castings, and 20% biochar. There will be 16 plants in each group, four tomato plants, four peppers, four kale, and four collards for a total of 48 plants. I know this sounds like a lot of trouble to go to, but fortunately you don't have to do all of this to participate in the trial. In fact, there's a lot of flexibility. For example, instead of using two test groups and four plants, you could use only one test group, let's say the 10% biochar group, and one plant type, let's say kale. This level of participation would involve only eight kale plants and a very small amount of biochar. So if you're interested in participating in the trial, but my prior communications made it sound like too much of a hassle, please consider conducting a smaller trial like the one described here, and see the link to the Home Garden Field Trials community in the description below to join. Recently I've completed a number of tasks in preparation for the indoor trial. I bought coconut coir, harvested worm castings, and made another batch of biochar. And yesterday I completed one of the most important tasks of the trial. I blended the biochar with worm castings to charge it with nutrients and inoculate it with beneficial microbes. This step is critical because pure biochar that hasn't been charged and inoculated can actually inhibit plant growth. To be most effective, biochar needs to be charged for at least 14 days. Since I won't be starting my trial until February 15th, my biochar will charge for a full four weeks before being used. But before blending the biochar with the castings, I first thoroughly mixed all the castings together to ensure a homogeneous source of castings. I did the same with the biochar, which came from multiple batches. Next, I was ready to mix the biochar with the worm castings. I did some calculations and determined I need at least 12 pots of castings and 4.8 pots of biochar to give me enough charged biochar for my indoor trial. 
This is a 5 to 2 ratio of castings to char. To keep things simple and ensure more than enough charged biochar, I rounded up to 15 pots of castings and 6 pots of biochar. I wore a dust mask while handling the dry biochar, but removed it after the biochar was thoroughly integrated into the moist castings. For the remainder of the charging period, I'll occasionally monitor the moisture level of the mix and add water when needed to ensure the moisture level of a wrung out sponge. There's not much left to do between now and the start of the indoor trial on February 15th. I do have to do some work to prepare my grow room for the additional 48 plants that will be grown in the trial, but that's about it. This waiting period will give me time to start thinking about the outdoor biochar field trial that will be starting in the spring. Later this month, with help from the Home Garden Field Trials community, I'll write the guidelines for this trial and share them with the community in hopes that others will be interested in participating. I'm also thinking about conducting a second field trial in 2014. At this point, I'm considering a rock dust field trial. Please let me know in a comment below if a rock dust field trial is something you might be interested in participating in or following in 2014. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.